Starship Mega Rocket, the world's largest and most powerful, was sent into space by SpaceX on the 14th of March, 2024. It reached orbital speed in a historic third test flight from South Texas. It was a glorious event. Hundreds of spectators, rocket launch chasers, and fans gathered along the shores of South Padre Island and nearby areas to witness the flight of the biggest rocket ever built. Starship lifted off at 9.25 a.m. EDT from SpaceX's manufacturing and test launch facilities near Boca Chica Beach. According to the company, the launch happened on the 22nd anniversary of SpaceX's founding in 2002. Unfortunately, neither the Starship vehicle itself nor the Super Heavy booster managed to survive all the way through to the intended splashdown. And still, SpaceX representatives claimed that the test flight achieved quite a few of its main goals during the flight. It went like this. The dim morning sky was brightly lit by the ignition of Starship's 33 first-stage Raptor engines. Soon, the vehicle was shrouded in plumes of dust and smoke. A mere seconds later, the 400-foot-tall rocket lifted off the ground and started its climb skyward. This launch, Integrated Flight Test 3, was Starship's third test mission. The first and second launches didn't end well. Both vehicles detonated before completing their goals. On the bright side, data collected by those first flights helped SpaceX engineers prepare Starship for the successful launch. The improvements included the implementation of a hot staging technique. When it's used, the upper stage engines begin firing before the spacecraft's first stage booster, the very super heavy we spoke about earlier, separates completely. This hot staging maneuver turned out to be a success. But back to the Mega Rockets launch. Already high in the sky, Starship's two stages separated. It happened around 2 minutes and 45 seconds after the liftoff. The 165-foot-tall upper stage spacecraft continued onward to space. As for Super Heavy, it began preparations for redirecting its trajectory. The post-staging burn was supposed to be followed by a landing burn above the Gulf of Mexico minutes later. But apparently, the engines of Super Heavy didn't reignite as planned, which, sadly, led to the loss of the booster. Specialists from SpaceX are going to go through data to find out the reasons for this issue. Starship is built to be fully reusable. SpaceX plans to land and relaunch Super Heavy boosters, just like it does with its Falcon 9 rockets. In the future, two large arms attached to Starship's launch tower will be catching Super Heavy after it returns for landing. This time, though, it was supposed to splash down in the Gulf. But what happened to the upper stage of the spacecraft? After separating, it continued flying for some time. But it didn't even try to go into a full orbit. Instead, the space vehicle entered a suborbital coast phase while soaring above Earth. SpaceX hoped to use this phase to demonstrate two of the spacecraft's flight systems – the reignition of the Raptor engines and the transfer of cryogenic fuel between tanks. Afterward, the spacecraft was to splash down in the Indian Ocean a bit more than an hour after launch. Unfortunately, SpaceX lost contact with Starship during re-entry. SpaceX has lots of plans that involve Starship. For example, the company hopes to use this space vehicle to launch the next generation of Starlink Internet satellites. Equipment needed to build another launch tower has started to arrive at the site. Infrastructure for Starship launches from NASA's Kennedy Space Center is also well underway. The thing is, the faster the company will be ready for the next launch, the sooner NASA will give Starship qualification to carry astronauts. Perhaps reaching NASA's ambitious Artemis III timeline might be a bit unrealistic. But SpaceX is no stranger to fast launch cadences. The company's Falcon 9 rocket has been breaking its own annual launch record year after year. ISRO India's space agency has recently launched its first satellite to study black holes. The X-ray polarimeter satellite was sent to space aboard ISRO's PSLV rocket. This incredible feat makes India the second nation to study black holes and other space bodies using an orbiting observatory. The new satellite is carrying two scientific payloads and is going to study different cosmic sources of X-rays. 
NASA launched a similar mission in December 2021. It has shed light on the remnants of supernova explosions and particle streams emitted by black holes. As for India's mission, it's expected to last for around five years. It's likely to help us understand X-ray emission mechanisms of different astronomical sources, like neutron stars, black holes, and star-forming nebulae. The scientific payloads are supposed to investigate the polarization of intense X-ray sources. It can help us better understand the geometry of such celestial sources and the radiation mechanism. This mission follows a number of successful launches conducted by ISRO in 2023. Those include the Chandrayaan-3 mission that landed a probe on the lunar south pole and a satellite launched to study the sun. By the way, the agency has also announced its ambitious plans for 2024, and they include gearing up for the country's first crewed mission to space. The newest ISRO's mission is going to study about 50 potential sources in space, including neutron stars and black holes. So let's talk a bit more about those extreme objects. Both black holes and neutron stars are ultra-dense objects formed from the remnants of stars nearing the end of their lives. First, we'll figure out what a neutron star is. Stars keep their spherical shape because their gigantic mass creates a powerful gravitational field that pulls gas toward the center. At the same time, their cores produce enough energy to prevent this gas from gathering too close to the center. All this creates a nice balance and a beautiful spherical shape. But once a star becomes too old and massive, it doesn't have any fuel left. That's why all the reactions in its core slow down and then stop completely. The star's outer layers try to collapse inward, but they bounce off the core, which remains incredibly dense. That's when everything but the star's core blasts out all over the universe in a bright supernova explosion. But that's not the end of the star. Even without the outer layers, its core keeps collapsing. At one point, the pressure inside becomes so great that electrons and protons melt into each other and form neutrons. The result of this crazy fusion is a neutron star, and 90% of its mass consists of neutrons. It means that the resulting space object just can't be squashed any tighter. Energy starts leaving the fading star, transforming it into a neutron star. A neutron star, which is basically a ginormous nucleus, the central part of an atom, is relatively small. Even though scientists don't know for sure how big neutron stars are, they suppose that these space bodies shouldn't be bigger than 12 miles across. For comparison, our Sun is almost 864,000 miles across. As for black holes, they are probably even more extreme than neutron stars. They pack incredible amounts of mass in a single point, which makes them infinitely dense. And when I say infinitely, I mean it. Such density creates an enormous gravitational pull toward the center of the black hole that no one and nothing even light can escape. In other words, black holes are so unique because they're the only existing objects surrounded by a region of space-time that is entirely inaccessible to the rest of the universe. They also heat anything approaching them to billions of degrees F and make it reach the speed of light before swallowing it. 